When we're buying our owner occupier or an investment property, we want to think about how we're going to create some wealth out of that asset. Now, if it's owner rock, we can understand that it's more of an emotional decision. Okay, I want to be in particular school zones, or I want parks and gardens, or I want a, a nice backyard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But fundamentally, that contributes to your overall wealth bucket, doesn't it? Buying an investment property, we're thinking more strategically with less emotion. Uh, either way, when we look at creating wealth through property, three ways, buy a discount, add value to something, and capital growth. Now, capital growth is the least in our control. We can't guarantee what that outcome is going to bring us, but the first two we can definitely have control over. So I wanted to chat today about adding value to an investment property or indeed your owner occupier home, but probably more focused towards investment properties because of that non-emotional attachment to it. So two things I think we need to factor in, and it's before we buy that property, not after we've bought it. I think their um, risk profile and the money we've got to spend is what we need to factor in when we're thinking add value, right? So when we're looking at buying a property, we can understand that, yeah, we're up for what we call a high add value outcome. So it might be a structural renovation, or it might be an extension, it might be putting in a granny flat, it might even be a mini development, knock down and build a couple of townhouses or units, right? It's something well advanced and requires a lot more money from your back pocket or uh, equity from the property. We then work back a step and say it might be a medium add value, and that's something like a new kitchen or new bathroom or a combination of both. So dollars to be spent, yes, but more of a, I suppose, a medium level spend. And, and obviously the cost of materials has grown the last 12 months or so, uh, so we obviously need to factor that in. But that's a medium where we're not changing the roof line of the property so much, we're just improving its existence. So improving and replacing kitchen, bathroom, etc. And then we go back to a low add value outcome and that's probably something more of a, a, a nice easy cosmetic improvement. So we might look at replacing the carpets, we might look at uh, replacing or, or painting the walls, we might look at um, replacing the fence if it's, if it's uh, on its way out. So very easy uh, process and a lot less money required, right? So we've got low, medium, high as our add value options, right? How much money have we got? And then what's our risk profile? And the risk profile thing is something that maybe not a lot of us think of when we're buying an investment property. We can sit there and say, yeah, look, this is the worst house and the best street, and I've got some money to do that, but I've, had, I've never actually done a structural renovation or I've never actually done a, uh, or put in a granny flat or I, I like the idea of subdivision but I've never done it. So the risk profile levels are, are too low, right? But we've gone and bought something that obviously needs that to be able to uh, A, rent out and B, maximize its wealth potential. So understand where your risk profile is out on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, where does it sit? And if you're thinking, yeah, look, I'm at uh, maybe replacing the carpets and, and uh, giving it a paint job, then that's probably a two, three or four on the risk profile level. And, and then the money required is, is obviously a lot smaller because it plays a big part in buying that property and not having that remorse or regret that we bought the wrong property and we've always got issues with it because we bought something in such a low condition. However, the high end of the scale comes with the biggest returns, generally speaking, if we do it well. If we spend a dollar, we'd like to get at least $3 return on that. So if we spend a thousand, we want $3,000 return, improving the value of that property. If we're just spending a dollar and getting a dollar back, then that's not going to, uh, to help with our wealth creation. May increase our rent, which is obviously another um, factor to uh, enter into the conversation. But I think overall, as a property investor, we wanna be building a portfolio knowing that we can generate some equity from the existing portfolio that we've got, as well as improve our cash position for that next purchase. So hope that uh, makes all sense to you. If, uh, if you need anything further, um, yeah, feel free to reach out and we can have a chat.